So I've been pretty loose about how exactly you compute the treatment effect at the cutoff for a regression discontinuity design. Well, let's talk about that a little more. So here in the Thistle, Wait, and Campbell paper, we've got test scores on the horizontal axis, and here we've got students who scored a 10. They didn't get a certificate of merit. They're right below the cutoff. And students who scored an 11, they did get a certificate of merit. They're right above. So the simplest thing we can do, by analogy to how analyzing randomized experiments works, is say, well, these students over here, they're our treatment group. They got treated. So let's just look at the average outcome for those students. Well, that's exactly what's plotted on this chart, because it's the percent of students winning scholarships. And when the outcome variable is binary, one or zero, did you win the scholarship or not, the percentage of the units who won the scholarship is actually equal to the average outcome. So this variable on the vertical axis is the average outcome. That's this number right here, about 54% of students won scholarships. So that's the average outcome in the treatment group. Now let's look at the students in the control group. Just people who scored a 10, and among those people, the average outcome was about a 46. That's this solid line number right here. So by analogy to randomized experiments, we compare this number with this number. And the difference here, which is about looks like 10% or so, that's our estimate of the treatment effect. Now, you might think, why should I only compare 10 and 11? Why don't I actually compare the students who scored a 9 and a 10, call that my control group, to the students who scored an 11 and a 12, call that my treatment group? Well, if I did that, then I would have some average outcome, which would be between these two numbers here in the control group. Exactly where it lies depends on the percentage of students who got a 9 versus 10. Let's say it was 50-50, then it'd be exactly halfway between these two numbers. Over here, it'd be somewhere between the outcomes for 11 and for 12, which, since this is just a flat line, it'd just be up here. So if we included 9s in our control group and the 12s in our treatment group, then the treatment effect would be the difference between this number and something right in between these lines, or about this diff diff distance right here. So it would actually be a little bit smaller than if we only included the 10 and 11, because these people ha are closer up here. We could keep going. I could include the 8s over here, and I could include the 13s here. And then that would give me another difference. I could include the 7s and then the 14s. That would give me another difference. So as I increase the bandwidth, around the cutoff, the width of this band of people I include, I get a different number, estimated treatment effect, for each time I add somebody else on. Now, the, here's the problem. As I keep going, our worry that we're all of a sudden picking up the confounding effect of test score increases. Because as I already mentioned, we can't just compare average outcomes over here with average outcomes over here because the people over here have higher test scores than the people over here, in addition to the fact that the people over here got their certificate of merit. So that's not a clean comparison. We've got that confounding variable test score. We only really believe the comparison when we're doing it close to the cutoff. So the big question in this whole literature and this topic is, how close is close? Is just one away close, or is it two? Or can I go up to three? That's a question that people continue to work on to this day. It's very, uh, very difficult and very important for practice because as you change the bandwidth, your estimate of the treatment effect changes. Now, why would you want to include more, keep going out further? One reason would be that you get more data. And the more data you include, we know that that means your confidence intervals are going to go down. So if you look too close to the cutoff, then you're going to have very little data because there's not that many people who are exactly close to the cutoff. And so you're going to get big confidence intervals. So that's one benefit um, of, being, of using more. But the cost is that you're worried about that confounding bias that enters in. So that's one thing you could do. That's the most natural thing. Now, another thing you could do, which is what Thistleway and Campbell have, is you do a regression on the left-hand side. Okay, that's what this dotted line is here. Then you do a regression on the right-hand side. That's what this dotted line is here. And then you just compare 
the values of these two different regression lines at this point. So that's what this little circle here is actually. That's a continuation of this regression line over to the other side. And then you can compare this difference. And that gives you another way of computing this treatment effect. Well, the benefit of doing that, as opposed to this other approach, which I'd call the non-parametric approach, this experiment, randomized experiment-like analysis, the benefit of this, this parametric linear approach, is that you're actually using all the data, even the people down here, to compute this number. And even the people over here are being used to compute this number, because everyone over here is used to compute this line. So that means that your estimate of this treatment effect is actually going to be quite precise, because you're using a lot of data. The downside is you really have to make sure that this uh, specification is correct, that it truly is sort of a linear relationship. And if this linear relationship isn't valid, then you might be getting some extra bias because of misspecification, because of a problem with your statistical method. Um, as opposed to the analogy to experimental design, where you're just comparing the, the average outcomes in these two groups. Okay? So the bottom line here is that there isn't one easy answer that you should always do in one case. And people are still working on this. And this is choosing this bandwidth and how exactly to compute the treatment effect is a, the most important problem in an RDD design, regression discontinuity. So these are a few ways you can do it but there's no easy answer.